Good morning, everyone. We thank God for this uh, blessed Sunday that we are here in this church. Thank you for the report. And uh, that's one way of showing our love for the church, for our brethren, and uh, as well as for our community. So since this month is, uh, we, we talk about love, hope for mature love. So uh, let's continue to practice our love for others and especially nurture na to ang love para sa ginoo. And uh, today is February 13. I think daghan sa inyo excited para ugma. Tomorrow will people will be celebrating Valentine's Day. But uh, kita, mga Christians, we, we don't celebrate val- Valentine's Day. Wala kita naga celebrate anak because uh, ingon nila, I, I, I search on it, yeah, it derives from pagan, paganism and uh, Valentine's Day involves strong infatuation and lust rather than genuine love. So, uh, mawakin ni ang gina emphasize sa uh, Valentine's Day and uh, they celebrate sa, sa kaning character na si Saint Valentine, tama ba? But we celebrate Jesus Christ who who died on the cross to save us because of his love para kanatong tanan. So we don't celebrate Hearts Day on February 14 lang, but we celebrate love every day. Every day is a great opportunity to uh, show our love for our uh, for others. And we must grow in our biblical love so that our lives will give glory to God. We must grow in biblical love. Biblical love. Daghang klase sa paghigugma. But uh, this morning, it will lead us to our text today in Philippians chapter 1. Ato kining basahon. Philippians chapter 1. And our message for this morning is abounding in mature love. Philippians chapter 1 verses 9 until verse 11. Let us read all together. Philippians chapter 1 verses 9 to 11. Ready? Start. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ. So, to the glory and praise of God. Father, we thank you for this morning. We pray that you will give us wisdom and understanding. Give us a humble heart to receive your word, Father. And be with us. Be with us, Father, as we uh, listen to your voice this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, there are two extremes in the Christian life that we must avoid if we wish to grow to maturity. Two extremes nga ginapractice sa ato ang uh, mali nga pagpractice about love, understanding about love. And first is those who don't need to emphasize truth but rather love and actually na ay grupo ng ani na ay religion nga ing ani nga they don't uh, emphasize truth but they uh, emphasize love kana lang yun ang ilaha they they think that doctrine is divisive so because of doctrine mao kana ang rason nga mag mag divide ang ilang church so para sa ilaha Bisag unsa man ka, bisag unsa man ka, bisag unsa imong belief. They accept those who are professing Christian no matter how they live or what they believe as long as they love one another. They emphasize unity with anyone no matter how wrong their doctrine. So they are feeling oriented Christians who are not living according to the scriptures. So mo kani ang first nya extreme practice of love about sa Christianity nga bahala nag ma-compromise na to ang kamatuuran bahala nag ma-compromise na to ang Bible basta kita as a church as Christians nagatigom kita 
nagahigog maanay sa usag usa And that is extreme. They emphasize truth. They, they don't need to emphasize truth, but rather love. And the second one is, these people emphasize knowledge and correct doctrine. Opposite. Sakto ang ilang doktrina. They emphasize knowledge, but in practice, they deny biblical love. They are not showing the biblical love, the love that God has shown to, to, to everyone. And these people attend all programs in the church. They always love to be in the church, but they hate those who disagree with them. They avoid confronting the coldness of their hearts toward God and His people. And they congratulating themselves on being correct doctrinally. Or in other words, naaragyud sila tanan sa ulo. They're all head, but no heart. Naasla sa simbahan, pirmi, but they don't show love to others. Nagalingkod simbahan, walay, walay absent. Present tanan sa attendance, pero bagawa sa simbahan. They don't show love. And this is the pharisaical disease. Nga, usually madunga na to, maka Diyos, pero hindi makamasa. And however, the Bible presents a fine balance between head and heart. The biblical Christianity means loving God and others. That is the greatest commandment. Loving God and loving others. So love is in line with God's truth as revealed in His Word. Love for God or for others that is not based on truth is just emotionalism. Naaragyod sa feelings. And this morning, let us see how can we grow in our love for God and for others. Because that is the desire of God, of Jesus Christ, para ka natong tanan. To love Him and to love others as our neighbor. To love our neighbors as yourself. So this morning, let us see how can we grow in our love for God and for others. So first here, mature love requires intimate prayer. It requires intimate prayer. See Paul, in verse 9, he said, And this I pray. He starts with a prayer. And this I pray that your love may abound more and more. He prays that their love may abound. And this, uh, remember, this was already a church characterized by love. This is a church. And Paul is not praying that they might love. But he is praying that their love, which is nagapadayun, nagexist, may abound more and more. He prays that their love may keep growing and overflowing and never ending na paghigugma. So even in the loving Philippian church, kining a Philippian church, um, they are known to be loving. Loving church. And it seems nga naagihapon si lahat. There, there were those who love did not abound more and more. Or naagihapon yung paghigugma nga wala na grow sufficiently to the glory and praise of God. And that is why Paul started with a prayer. So when, when you love, you pray. You pray to God to increase your love. You pray to the Lord nga ang imuhang paghigugma sa imuhang igsuon. Sa imuhang kauban sa simbahan will continue to abound. And Paul's prayer was a personal request to God. And it should be part of your prayer. It should be personal when you pray for mature love. Paul begins with this, I pray that your love. It is a personal and intentional prayer of Paul. He did not pray by chance or he did not pray. Kay tungod. Uh, it was a need. He prayed intentionally. Ampuan yun niya. That's why when you pray to increase your love for others, make it personal and be intentional. Make it part of your devotion, daily devotion, daily prayer time. 
that you will increase your love. And another one, prayer strengthens love. And this is the source of the strength sa itong paghigugma sa, ato, sa inyong mga asawa, sa inyong mga bana, sa inyong mga anak. In order for you to, to love them more, you need prayers. And as we read on this letter, the book of Philippians, tanawa ni Muni, the, the whole book of Philippians, Paul mentions two names. Na ay duha ka pangalan na rin, nga listod i-pronounce. Nga iyang i-addressed. They were leaders in the church who seemed to have had a broken relationship. And these were uh, Yudia and Sintichi. We really do not know what was the cause of this broken relationship, but not as like disagreement. And that is why Paul prayed that their love may abound. And in other words, he prayed that they may grow in their love for God and for one another. He believed that love is the solution to their problems. He believed that love would heal the damages of their relationship if it grows abounds. So to grow and abound in love, it requires prayer. Because prayer strengthens love. You pray to love your family. You pray to love your wife more and more. You pray to, to love your, your children. You pray to love God more. Kinahanglan og pagampo because God is the author of love. And when you love someone, you want the best for them. And when you want the best for, for someone, you will pray for them. You will pray for that person because Paul loved the Philippians. He loved this church and that is why he prayed for them. So, if you feel you grow cold in your love for the Lord, pray anyway. Start, start with the prayer. If you think nga ka nang murag nagahinay-hinay, nag nakagkaluya sa pagpangalagad sa ginoon mo, pagigugma, because God as our first love, and you think nga na mo na siya, nimo siyang second love, then pray. Pagampo. Pray to the Lord to restore your love para sa yaha. Because prayer strengthens love. If you feel you don't love your wife or your husband, pray to God to restore your love. Pray to experience His love and pray much for His love to be manifested to you. Our human relationships grow and develop through communication. Pinagi sa pag -istorya -istorya, ang relationship naga-nurture, naga-grow. And the same sa atong relationship with God. The same sa atong relationship sa ginoo. Through prayer, we can express both our thanksgiving and as well as our concerns, our burdens, Starting and ending your day by talking to God is a great way to strengthen your faith, your reliance, and your love for Him. Because prayer strengthens love. So if you want to have that mature love, if you want to show that mature love to the church, to your family, to the community, Start with a prayer. Pagampo. Because Paul recognized the importance of prayer. Diba ang iyang gusto diri? Is that their love will abound more and more. And the first step he did was to pray. And this I pray that your love may abound more and more. So mature love requires intimate prayer. And the second one is this, mature love must be coupled with knowledge and discernment. So here we can see the content of Paul's prayer. Ang unod sa iyang pagampo. The content of Paul's prayer is that their love may abound more and more with knowledge and discernment. 
more in knowledge and all discernment. Paul knows that even though they have struggles in the church, and even though na ay a selfishness, selfishness. In fact, na, na mention na sa chapter 2. Nga ingon ni Paul, Let each of you look not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. And he uh, used Christ as an example of humility. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, but did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Although they have struggles in the church, he recognizes the love that they have for the Lord. Na kanang paghigugma nila para sa Ginoo, paghigugma nila para sa lang mga igsuon sa simbahan will continue to grow. And he wants their love to abound. Abound in in Greek word is perisio. That means to grow deep. Abiding love. And he wanted their love for God to abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment. The word knowledge means knowledge gained from personal experience. And the Greek word for discernment means the ability to apply that knowledge gained in personal experience. So knowledge and discernment was the content of Paul's prayer. Sa ilang paghigugma. Because they have experiences, they have struggles, and they want, and Paul wants that, that personal experience na makalearn sila, and to apply it to the practical details of living. So when we say knowledge and discernment, it is not based on feeling or culture. Love is not blind. It does not close its eyes to reality. Biblical love is related to true knowledge and it, co -op and it operates with careful discernment. We can't know love by uh, looking at our culture. Or kung unsay ginasulti sa atong palibot, sa kalibutan, sa social media. We can only know God, know, know what love looks like by studying the character of God. We can only know real love by understanding the work of Christ. And a lot of relationships are broken because they base their love and their feelings or what the culture says. Yesterday, I listened to a sermon when love goes wrong. And si Samson ang nahimo nga example or the character nga gigamit sa preacher. Love goes wrong when you choose lust over love. Because the Samson, this is an example of Samson choosing lust over love. He saw the prostitute, si Delilah. He desired her. So he went in to spend the night with her. And this was a one night stand. And there was no love involved here at all. It was all about lust. Samson. And anytime we enter into sexual relationship outside of marriage, we are choosing lust over love. We are choosing what we want over what God says is best for us. We are we we base our love on our feelings. So love goes wrong when you choose lust over love. And that is why di yun nato i-base ang atong paghigugma kung unsay atong gibati karong adlawa. Because feelings fade. Feelings will change. And I saw a po post if you fall in love because someone makes you laugh, what happens when you no longer find them funny? What happens kung di na sila katawanan para sa imuha? What happens kung wala na kanila gipakatawa? Because you fall in love. Tungod kay Joker siya. If you fall in love because someone is beautiful, what happens when that beauty fades? 
What happens kung maabot na lang 60? Makita ni mong gakunot-kunot ng itsura. And if you base your love on your feelings, siguro mag mapulan ka magtanaw. Mangita na po kag presko. Di ba? If you fall in love because someone can provide for you, what happens when they lose wealth? Love is not just a feeling. It is a responsibility and a commitment to love that person each and every day. Love is not based on what the culture says. The culture says love knows no gender. It's true that we are commanded to love one another, to love every person, but dapat sa tamang tao sad. Because God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. So love should not be based, love is not just a feeling or what the culture says. And another one, love discerns truth. Biblical love discerns truth and error and right and wrong. Ang tinuod nga pagigugma, it discerns truth. Unsay tama, o unsay ang mali. Biblical love does not tolerate evil. It does not, dis- it discerns truth and error. Uh, I, I read a, kaning part sa iyahang kuan, book, ang pastor, Kini siya nga author, he was confronted. Kay tungod nag nag-confront siya sala. And an elder's wife told the pastor to to get out of the pastorate because he was he was too much like Paul and not like Jesus. And the pastor asked for clarification. Yanong ingana man imuhang pagsulti because a Jesus was always nice and loving, but Paul was not like that. Kaya si Paul kuno straight to the point and si Paul ko ang tiyayo mo badlong jud so confronting sin is not evidence of a lack of love biblical love is based on the true knowledge of God and when you see your child doing wrong kita ni mo anak nga mali na yang gibuhat of course imo nang badlungon imo nang kasabahan kini man ang maayo yang gihimo makita ni mo nga kana dili na maayo para sa ha Imong idisiplina. Undangon niya ang undangon nimo ang iyang gihimo. Hindi man maayo sa iya. And uh, that's what happened sa mga duha sa Wiksoon during sa mong elementary days and high school elementary and high school days. Permi mi makasabaan sa among kaan, sa mong ginikanan, sa mong papa. Okay. Magkating classes man mi. Magkating classes nya modo sa com shop, computer. So one time, grabe ang iyang pagdisiplina sa mo ah, nga, nagsigi na maghihilak and na-experience yun na mo na, nagisulod mig sako so, dito nag-ask, na, akong manghod nung utana siya na, love, magkahamini mo pa gigugma magkahamini mo pa pero nga nung bawalan man mi sa among gusto, nga nung bawalan man mi ninyo sa among kalipay muna iyang gipong utana and kana nga question nagpabilin niya po na sa utok sa kong papa until now and that time di na mo masabdan niya nung bawalan mi but karon nga nagdagko na mi karon nga uh, nakahuman na mi pag eskwela I'm so happy sa disiplina I'm so happy sa correction naghihimo sa kong parents and na ako yung mga classmates yung mga katong kauban ako sa sa pagkating klase sa una baguli na ako uh, nag namasahero na lang sila wala na eh. habal-habal driver na lang wala man sa dili man sa pag uh, look down sa ilang trabaho or sa ila ha but uh, because of the wrong choices or maybe a lack of discipline sa parents so biblical love includes knowledge of truth and error and right and wrong so when you see your child doing wrong nakita nimo nga mali yun na para sa Badlungo nimo, 
Because that is not good. Para sa yaha. It includes correction and discipline. Since biblical love is both holy and based on truth, we cannot love properly if we lack discernment. We cannot love properly if we lack discernment. Discernment, again, is the ability to understand, to interpret, and apply truth skillfully. To apply that personal experience. Because when there is no correction, there is no love. Kung walay pagbadlong, walay pagconfront sa sala, walay paghigugma. Correction and discipline is part of love. Now the third one. Mature love involves godly living. Let me read again. Makita na to dari in verse 10. That you may approve the things that are excellent. That you may be sincere and without offense or blameless till the day of Christ. Mature love involves godly living. It involves proper priorities. The phrase here, that you may approve the things that are excellent. Or in other words, that to discern what is best. In NIV translation, to discern what is best. And other translation, I, Paul said, I want you to always be able to recognize the highest and the best. So life is filled with difficult and daily decisions. And godly living involves proper priorities. Every day we face a lot of choices. Choices nga dili lang about between good and bad. But between good and better. And between better and best. Yeah, sometimes that is not the case. The case is not just about bad and good. The case is about good and better. Between better and best. So it involves proper priorities. Work versus God. I, I, I don't say nga ang work is bad. Of course, we need to work para natay ka provide sa tong pamilya. We need to work para natay makaon. And on the other hand, God must be our highest priority. That's the uh, that's what happened to Mary and Martha. Si Mary, as si Martha, she was busy preparing for food. She was busy nga nagaandam para sa iyang mga bisita. And that, that is not a bad thing. Nagihimo niya. It was a good thing. Okay, of course, handaan dyan niya ang iyang bisita. Well, si, si Mary, wala siya nag, nagtabang sa iyang iksoon. Ang iyang gihimo, naglingkod lang siya, naminaw kay Jesus Christ. And si Martha, nag, ingna niya si Jesus Christ, ng Lord, ingna po na si Mary, nga pataba, patabangon diri. And Jesus said niya, it's more important to listen to God's word. It's more important to spend time with God. Sometimes that is the case. It's not about good and bad. It's about good and better. And better and best. So, God must be our highest priority. Because if you seek God first, everything will just fall into its proper place. And your priority as a husband and as a father, of course, na yung ipang give up, anak. For the sake, for the good of your family. Na kay mga, uh, siguro, mga na, na anada ni mo sa, na ni mo sa una, single pa ka. You have to give up those things for the good of your family. It involves proper priorities. That you may know, that you may approve the things that are excellent. Another one, is that you may be sincere and without offense, or you may be sincere and blameless. 
Mature love involves integrity. In these two words, sincere and blameless, Paul was referring to the inward and the outward parts of our character. To be sincere means to be pure. Walay sagul. Without hypocrisy. Walang halong kasinungalingan. And to be blameless means to walk without stumbling. Paul used the word blameless. Integrity. There's a quote. Nga nagaingon. Take care of your character and your character itself will take care of your reputation. As long as you take care of your character, as long as you are concerned sa mga kaugalingon, your inward being, your character itself will take care of your reputation. Your character itself will take care of your relationship, your integrity. Di ba? Indot niya na paminahon niya, blessing ka sa mga tao. Indot niya paminahon niya, imuhang madunggan sila ha is, imuhang pagkamaayo. Maka na, makita niya mo na ang atahanag, rabi ka na, maayo di kayo na siya. Mabless din ko sa iyo ang kinabuhi, ginalook up din ako na siya. It involves integrity. And it also involves living with expectancy of Christ's coming. Another phrase here, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Living with expectancy of Christ's coming. So the Christian who is growing in discerning love is living in light of Christ's soon coming. Ang pagbalik ni Jesus Christ. So if you are living for personal happiness or fulfillment in this life, you will live for self. And will not live in love for God and others. But if you realize that today, you could be face to face with Christ. Makarong adlawa, basin di ay mubalik ang ginoo. We do not know the exact date of Christ's coming. And that is why we have to expect every day. We have to live in expectancy of Christ's coming. Iwa kita kay Bao, kung kanus amuan muari sa Jesus Christ. And it should motivate us to live godly and to love others unconditionally. So we have to prepare ourselves. That's what happened to uh, the police station. So una, na, na, ang general sa PNP, na siya magbisita siya randomly sa mga stations dire sa Cebu. So wala niya gi, wala niya gi schedule kung kano sa siya mo, mo visit sa station 1, station 2 random ang iyang pagbisita para ang mga stations diri sa Cebu province mag-andam yun sila sa pag ni General Eliazar si General Eliazar pa to that time and kita as Christians we wait for our Savior we wait sa Ginoo sa kay Jesus Christ and we have to prepare. We have to live godly. And we have to love others unconditionally. And another one. In verse 11. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Mature love involves bearing fruit through the Lord Jesus Christ having been filled with the fruit of righteousness. So the moment we trust in Christ as our Savior, God imputes His righteousness to our account. And that is the imputation of Christ's righteousness to us, to the believer, so that we have the right na akitay taktakos kita sa pagatubang sa ginoo someday. But we all know that the Christian life is a process of growing. It is a daily process. Daily sanctification of Jesus Christ sa ang kinabuhi. Daily nga at the moment, instant, nagbago na yun ka. Of course, naapa na yung mga struggles ni mo. Kinahala ni mo, i-give up. 
You are not changed instantly and automatically. As the word fruit implies, this is a process. The word fruit, dili na pwede nga ang manga pagkaugma. Kalitan na bunga dra, bulak pa na karon pagkaugma. Hinug na ang manga. It is a process. It is a process, something, not something instant, instantaneous. This is the sanctification of Christ. So the word picture also implies that it is the life of Christ working in and through us that produces the fruit. The fruit, humility, kindness, service, patience, generosity. And this righteousness comes from Jesus Christ. It's not from us. Because no one is righteous, di ba? Walay matarong sa tuab, sa ginsa. It comes from Jesus Christ. And who receives the glory of our righteousness? The last phrase in verse 11. To the glory and praise of God, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. We should always give back the glory to the Lord. Every time we uh, just like sa pagtabang nato sa buhisan and sa barili. We don't get the glory. Although kita ang naghimo, but we should get kita ang naghago dito, but we should get, give back the glory para sa ginoo. Dili nga kita ang, ang main character atong paghimo nato atong mga relief goods, paghatag nato ato. We were just representatives, instruments nga gamit sa ginoo. To give the goods. So who receives the glory of our righteousness? It's God the Father. To the glory and praise of God. For Him, through Him, to Him are all things. So these are the contents of Paul's prayer to the Philippians. That their love will abound. Coupled with knowledge and discernment. That leads them to live a godly life. So, we develop spiritual discernment by abounding more and more in our love for God. And the more we love God, the closer we are to Him. The better knowledge we have of Him, the deeper our understanding of His Word, and the sharper will be our spiritual discernment. So, if you want to grow in your love, Prayer is the first step. If you want to grow in love, consider God and His Word so that you will have knowledge and discernment of what is true, what is not right, and what is wrong. Because growing in biblical love will lead you to live godly. So this month, as we discuss or listen to sermons hope for mature love let us continue to pray let us ask God that our love for Him our love for others will continue to abound and that love will have the true knowledge discernment and it will lead us to live a godly life it will lead us to to do our priorities to bear fruit for Jesus Christ to expect for His coming and to have integrity para sa kaugalingon so let's continue to desire to love God more and to love others as ourselves. let's pray Father we thank you for your word we thank you that you have spoken to us this morning. We pray that you will keep your word sa mga mga kasing-kasing and sa mga mga panguna-una agino. And as we uh, go out in this church, help us, Lord, to practice love to everyone we meet. 
So bless your people, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.